Corn says, Hey Digon, are we ever gonna get more people on the show? What? The three of us aren't good enough for you, dog? Hey, what's up, y'all? You already know what it is. Digon vs. Commenters for episode number 20 of season three. I think I saw in the comments somewhere, 77 episodes of Face Check. That's, that's a lot. A lot of consistency, but I'm very happy to be here with all of you, which is why we made Digon vs. Commenters, so let's get right to it. Kyo F says, Show production just keeps getting better, and I feel like you guys are a lot more scripted, question mark, but in a good way. Like, you don't really go on long tangents and the show flows better. This podcast is really rising in quality every week. Well, yeah, there's been 77 of them. You make a lot of mistakes, you figure out how to get better. Um, it's actually not scripted, right? We have a general idea on what we want to talk about, but even this episode was not that scripted. Obviously, we had a couple graphics that Melina made, and then Joe does a fantastic job either getting us into a replay or pulling up basic graphics on the fly. He's fantastic. Thanks for the support. All three, I guess five of us, want this show to be the best that it can be, and glad that it's paying off. Oh boy, we need some copium. Copium. Uh, Natre, Natre, we are infinite. <laughs> Sorry, he tells you, kind of crazy. Says, LS has to coach TSM, please, bless up. I need to see this in life. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Andre Kristik, Kristich said, about camera panning to other lanes, what's the point of having teammates in call if they don't tell you the enemy is missing or diveable? What other things are being said then? Well, when I was over at Golden Guardians and other teams that I've coached or managed, it's a lot of what they're able to do, not necessarily what is happening or what the consequences could be. So it's um, it's like if, if, uh, if you wanna eat something, right? You just go, I'm hungry, and that's it, right? Because you're still doing things, you're just like, I'm hungry, right? It requires someone else to be like, oh, well, what do you want to eat? When do you want to eat? How hungry are you, right? All these things that we say in real life that seem to be clarifiers and doesn't take a lot of time because we're just focused on the conversation, solving that. Whereas when you're CSing, and focusing on where your opponent is and trying not to get traded and wondering where the jungler is and you're still trying to communicate and trying not to over communicate because everyone else has to focus on their own lanes. Uh, I think that's where the communication starts to not be as efficient as it can be because we've already hit the world of where comms are cluttered. You know, you've heard that one before. Comms are cluttered, everyone just yelling stuff. Well, I think now in the present time, we do this thing of not communicating enough. You say what it is, but not what it means. So I think hopefully that helps. Menyan Leia says, I'm not going to defend all chatting and not seriousness of Jizuke in game, but I just want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he laughs at his mistakes to shrug them off. I don't really believe this is the case, but I also see Perks laughing at his mistakes and I know how tryhard he is. So I don't think he is completely carefree yet. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, they both laugh at their mistakes, but you can see the value that Perks brings when he's ahead and he's dominant. Perks is laughing at his mistakes when he's like 0 5, 0 6, you know, and just like, holy cow, like, this is a hard game and it's my fault, right? Whereas it, you just get this feeling from Jizuke, it's more like, well, that was funny, you know, and let me see if I can try to fix it and, you know, dive deeper into it. And that, you know, and that's where we got the all chat, like, you know, baited or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's really just the difference on the uh, caliber of player based off of the history of their success. The Jizuke doesn't have the success that Perks does. And we've already heard so many times how much Perks elevates his teammates to find ways to win. Like all, all of his teammates have always said that and you see how G2 is struggling now. You haven't heard that about Jizuke. You just know he's a madman, he's a coin flipper, he could definitely snowball, but not, hey, he elevates everyone else around him. So I think there's a difference between laughing at your mistakes to keep a, uh, a, a cool environment for the rest of your team, or laughing at your mistakes because you think it's funny. 
All right, got some back-to-back -back Cloud9 comments. Enzo Vandenberg says, C9 just want to make money. They sub in a rookie in a fairly good team, both players and standings, and if they somehow carry this sub, he can be sold for more. Sven probably has a buyout and is worth more anyways. They did it with licorice, Zazel, contracts. Moneymaker subs. August Everlasting says, to be fair, I imagine it, it's a hard balancing act between keeping good and experienced players who will eventually get burnt out and lose their edge and introducing new players who aren't as good and need the experience to get better but handicap the team they're brought on. Fudge is a pretty good example of high risk, high reward. I remember when he started this season and turned every game into a 4v6, but he's grown so much in a short time and is one of the best top laners in NA now. Maybe they're trying to capture lightning in a bottle with King. Okay, so I, I picked these two comments out because these are the, you know, opposite sides of the argument. Kind of, eh, kind of. I, I would say it's like, ah, this is the reward of one side of the argument and this is the other side of the argument, I would say. In terms of like, hey, Cloud9 has been the uh, talent finder of North America, for sure, right? Like there's, there's no doubt about it, there's been, uh, the most talent that has been pumped out of an academy or amateur system has been Cloud9. And for a while, I thought it was just Reaper, but it's not just Reaper, right? They are still implementing this after Reaper is left, now with Mithy slash Rainover, whoever's leading the team. So maybe there is some credence to it because, uh, let's see, can I say this? Yeah, sure, I'll say it. Uh, when we're at Golden Guardians, contracts was expensive more expensive than probably what he would have been if he wasn't on cloud nine and they were willing to pull the trigger to move on from contracts after his world's appearance because they had Spence Garen. the opportunity for Spence Garen came up so i think all that said cloud nine wanting to turn a profit using players isn't a bad thing all the organizations in the lcs almost all the organizations in the lcs lose money right and you need to find a way to sell you can't just sell merch like where do you think the money comes from like just a rich guy that gives you money that's great that's still losing money right you're not creating money you're not generating revenue by having this constant stream of players and their perceived value from other teams go up because they're on winning teams aka cloud nine cloud nine has now found a way to make money I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially when they're still in the top three. It'd be very, very different if they were, I don't know, like Immortals or FlyQuest or CLG where they're selling off players and you're like, you just sold your best player and you're now in the bottom half of the standings, right? Like that is very, very, very different. But Cloud9 still have found a way to find the right players to give the time to and then increase value of their either former player or current player uh, to sell so that they can keep one or the other. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, uh, to August's point, it is a high risk, high reward kind of thing. And yes, we all remember the early Fudge days, but Fudge has proven that he can do it and proved on the world stage he was probably Cloud9's best player. I think that's, that's a fair statement to say. And you cannot figure that out without giving a player reps. It comes at the cost of Sven, which, although is one of the longest tenured, most consistent, high caliber players in the league, is a known quantity. Sven is a known quantity. You know you can rely on him. What do you know about King? You're finding out with a massive lead compared to everyone else in the LCS. You just need to make playoffs. You make playoffs, you're fine. You know, well, I guess top two and you get the, uh, you know, the extra buy, but you're already starting way ahead of everybody else. So I, I think these early season subs are okay as long as that's what they are. It's like, hey, we want to figure out what we got. And not like a, uh, hey, this is what we're going for from here on out and blah, blah, blah. The way that Team Liquid did it was a little different than how I think Cloud9 is doing it. Those are the comments from this week. Appreciate all of you every single week, week in, week out, watching, supporting, commenting. It's been a fun ass ride. And uh, we'll catch you next week. No, they already know to subscribe. They're subscribed. Why wouldn't they subscribe? We give them free content all the time. Look, there's more right here. Why wouldn't they subscribe?
They already know. We don't have to tell them. 